This is the Sports Time Out Podcast with Brooklyn Farrell, Tony Caranco, and your host, Wes Underwood. And uh, yeah, welcome into the Sports Time Out Podcast brought to you by Jefferson's and Roberts Integrative Dentistry in Joplin, Wes Underwood, and uh, flying solo this week. No ghetto taco sights and sounds. So, uh, yeah, Tony, Clint, both out of town doing some things with their families. And, uh, well, we'll go ahead and get started. And first up into the NFL we go. And uh, going to talk some Tyree Kill. And this guy, though, he's being a fool. I mean, since leaving Kansas City, he disses a team who helped him in a time of crisis a few years ago with an incident that happened in his home, which... I do believe he was innocent. I truly do. But then this past season, he was upset over the Chiefs who offered the exact same contract, the exact same contract, but not all guaranteed. And he listened to his agent who has money galore. Then he moves to Miami on a trade and then trash talks Mahomes. Then the Chiefs do Chiefs things and, you know, win a Super Bowl, and he's quiet for a while. Now, in the offseason, he's at it again, saying he's going to be a nightmare in Kansas City on the field when he returns. And that after his contract ends in Miami, he's done playing. So, I don't know. Look, that's cool and all. But, buddy, be respectful to a team that gave you your shot. We know you love Andy Reid. Your problem wasn't with him. And we know you love Kansas City because you bragged about it all the time. My rant is over here, but deep down, I think he knows he's almost done. He knows he's made a mistake. And he knows the Chiefs will be okay. That being said, in the words of Chris Jones, May God bless you. May God bless you. Moving on in the NFL. Next, we talk Travis Kelsey. And the guy hosted SNL. He did okay. He did okay. It was a little rough. I'm not going to lie. But Travis, I respect you and your career. But SNL had its moments. Some of them were just awkward. Some of them were awkward. Your brother... Your mom, your dad, love them, love them. Nothing bad about them. But this next topic, though, Kelsey. Kelsey will be hosting a music festival in Kansas City called Kelsey Jam. It will take place during the draft on April 28th in Bonner Springs, Kansas. Music will feature Machine Gun Kelly. Okay. All right. Little Rick Ross. Okay. Tech Nine. I mean, there's some genres here already. Some genres. I I can get behind this. In my opinion, he's trying to help the Kansas City community as well as the NFL community. And he's trying to get them to come together and have some fun. So I, I like it. I really do. And again, 87, if you catch this, and uh, you have some issues or want to talk it over, you're more than welcome to come on and talk anytime. Tony, Clint, and I would love it. And I'm sure our viewers would too. But uh, good luck with the music festival. Good luck with your podcast at, uh, yeah, Union Station. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. Next, we jump into the NBA. Excuse me. And uh, the East is pretty much set. All the playoff spots are pretty much locked in. In fact, they are all locked in. And the West the West has eight teams that are battling to stay in. Um, playoff spots include Dallas and Utah. They're trying to stay in. And then OKC is trying to hold on. The Clippers, the Warriors, the Lakers, and the Pelicans are all trying to stay out of the play-in games. And, uh, I mean... I don't know. Can these teams hold their spots? I really don't know. I I think the Warriors do. 
I think the Warriors do. Clips, not 100%. Lakers, they may squeak into the top six. I mean, they real they, they fell really far behind. They did. But it's doable. The Lakers are doable. I mean, they got LeBron and AD. They're, they're doing their thing right now. The rest of the team's buying in. I, I guess that at this point in the season, you got to buy in. And they've got their team buying in. And Clint and Tony got it right. I mean, Clint called him getting in. Tony last week said that if the Lakers don't make it, the NBA doesn't make money. And I, I mean, I agree with that. I do. I do. And I mean, we'll move on to the Pelicans here. It, it's up to them at this point. And this team, I feel, they're where they are because of play, lack of play, you might say. An injury. I mean, when your star player has only played 114 games out of 246 plus games in his career, I mean, when he's in, it helps, and when he's out, it's not great. That that's just it's that simple. It's that simple. You add all the other teams' injuries in there throughout the season as well. I mean, it's tough. That goes for every team, though. I mean, it really does. But, yeah, th those are my thoughts here. Those are my thoughts here on the NBA. Um, those, are the, those are the eight teams that are battling to stay in the West. And I, I do believe Lake Show is going to make it, as much as that hurts me to say. OKC, I think they do make it. And Dallas and Utah, I, I, I think they'll, I don't know. They're on the outside looking in. Something's got to happen in Dallas. Kyrie effect has gone bad. So, you know, Utah, I think the Jazz are done. I truly do. On that note, we will uh, go ahead and briefly talk the Masters. And, I mean, all eyes on Tiger again. All eyes are on Tiger again. And the man finished day one yesterday at two over. Today, he'll tee off at 11.54 a.m. Eastern. My question here is, if he doesn't make it a great round today, should everyone following him give up on him? Give up on that Tiger train? Can, should we do it? I think so. I think everyone should leave Tiger be if he doesn't do well today. The guy is struggling. He hasn't been the same since his accident. I feel he needs to focus on his son. And just step away for a little bit longer. Believe me, I am a Tiger fan. I'm Team Tiger. But I think for the longevity of his health and his career, he needs to take a break. I really do. It's okay. We still love you, Tiger. Hear that. We still love you, Mr. Woods. Everything you've done, everything you've accomplished, there's no need for you to rush back. I mean... Arnold Palmer and those guys, man, Tom Watson, all them, they just, their careers went long because they made sure that they were healthy. They made sure that they rehabbed if they had an injury. Yeah, give it a shot. Take some time off. It, it's needed. It's needed. Next, we'll talk Sporting Kansas City. And uh, with most of the guys nearing a return, and Polito and Russell pretty much in full swing again, it's great news for Kansas City. Great news for Kansas City. You would think this would be the big news for tomorrow's match in Colorado. But instead, news turned to Ben Sweat being released this week. About a week after Peter Vermey's strong words and comments in the big loss to Seattle, Sporting Kansas City waived the defender on Tuesday afternoon. After Sweat was a non-injury absence in Sporting Kansas City's training session on Tuesday. Vermes then told reporters there would be more to come regarding the left back status. Sweat joined the team, if you don't know, uh, in free agency ahead of the 2022 season. He's working his way back from an ACL injury, and he made 29 appearances with Sporting in 2022 and 23 uh, combined delivering only three assists. But the main thing was, Vermes was upset in the aftermath of Sporting's home loss to the Sounders on March 25th. Which, I watched that game. 
I agree. It it was pretty abysmal to watch. I mean, and and rightfully so. Vermes critiqued a crucial on-field action, which ended up being two big actions, in which he committed two yellow card offenses and held Jordan Morris onside by a good four or five steps for Seattle's go-ahead goal at a uh, 10 minute span. I mean, I agree with Vermi's decision here. I, I agree with him on the general manager front and the coaching front. I like what he did. And maybe this could open the eyes of other players on the club to play better and not sloppy. I mean, Tommy and Agata both look sloppy. Agata though, after he scored his first goal, his play has kind of gone up a little bit, but I, I'm still a little concerned about Tommy. I mean, he came in with Agata last year. Both of them helped him to that winning streak. And then this year, things are just rough. I'm not 100% certain what's going on with the team. I don't know where their morale is, but they aren't looking like the Sporting Kansas City team that we've seen in years past. Last year, they missed the playoffs. And if the team plays like this the rest of the season, I think they could miss the playoffs as well. I'm very for sporting. I hope everything goes in their way. Good news that Kenda is back and Debe is back. They're training. They're very, very close, in the words of Peter Vermees, to rejoining the team. Very good news for this team. Very good news for this team. And uh, lastly, into the NWSL, I go. Got a chance to catch up with current rookie forward Michelle Cooper. And uh, we talked about her draft day experience and some other things. So, uh, yeah, go ahead and check it out. And we bring in one of the newest members of the current, and that is the second overall pick in the 2023 NWSL draft. Miss Michelle Cooper, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Man, I'm doing all right. Beginning of this week was a little rough with that weather, but uh, I, I think we got through it, so... Yes. But, all right, well, we get right to it. And I mentioned you being the number two overall pick in the NWSL draft. What went through your mind when you found out your destination? And then second, what was the first thing you did after the draft? Um, What went through my mind? I was shocked. I was super excited, super happy. I'm originally from Michigan, which is also what I consider to be the Midwest. So it really wasn't that far from home, not much different than home. And I was able to actually visit the previous summer, which made it so much nicer to know that it was a place I've already kind of experienced and a lot of the girls I knew, which made it so much easier to transition. And the first thing that I did was call my sister. Um, she unfortunately couldn't be at the draft with me. So I called her and it was like a cell phone screaming, <laughs> freaking out situation, but it was awesome. Sounds awesome. And uh, speaking of that, arriving to the team, who would you say your mentor has been thus far since you've arrived? Uh, I wouldn't say that I have one mentor. I think all the girls have been super, super helpful with the transition. And it makes it a lot easier that our club is a player first club and they make sure that we're all like really comfortable. We have whatever we need and everything is taken care of for us, which is super, super nice. And it made it a lot easier to know that I have all of the players on hand as well as all the staff and all the support staff, everyone there to help me. Well said, well said. And uh, another thing you've gotten to see since arriving here is the fans. How awesome was it to see the support from the city breaking the attendance record, by the way, this past weekend? And what does that mean to you as a newcomer in this league? It is awesome. It's nice to know that women's sports are continuing to grow and Kansas City comes and shows out for us. And it is awesome. The amount of energy and electricity in that stadium this past weekend was something I look forward to every weekend. I saw we don't have a home game for another two games, and I was like, dang it, I wanted to come back again and again and again for them. So I look forward to every single home game with them. They are awesome. Awesome, awesome indeed. And uh, you've now played in two games, though. What's been the biggest difference between college and the NWSL thus far? Definitely the speed of play. The girls in this league are phenomenal. You play against women on the full national teams. You play against women who have, who are veterans and have been in this league since it's been built and they are good. And the speed of play is rapid compared to college. And I love it. Sounds fun. Sounds fun. And uh, 
Speaking of college, though, in your first match, you had your former team behind you in that game in North Carolina. How much did that mean to you in your first game in the league? It was so nice. A, being close to something that I call home, North Carolina, Durham, that guy, Duke, and having all of my support show out was so nice. My entire old team came out. A bunch of my coaches came out. Support staff came out back at Duke. And it was so awesome being able to hear them and just ha- feel their support and continued cheering no matter what minute in the game it was, no matter what the score was. It was awesome. And I, I'm so grateful that, for them. Yeah. And I'm sure uh, they're grateful for you too, because that kind of support, I mean, you got to be loved there. So that's awesome. (laughs) They are awesome. And uh, next, I'd like to go ahead and talk about the game against the Red Stars next Saturday. How are you feeling going into that match? And what's kind of the team's mindset going in after the week off? I think we're all super excited. I mean, I was saying earlier, we're looking forward to the next game. It's nice to collect ourselves after these past two games, regroup, decide what we need to work on and get working at it for an extra week, which is so nice. But we cannot wait to pick up again and go back at it in Chicago. Indeed. And last question here. We have a bit of a fun one for you. And uh, next to being drafted, what's been your favorite soccer moment in your career? Probably as a whole, I would have to say playing at Duke University I loved it there. It was so much fun. And without them, I wouldn't be where I am or who I am today. The team, my teammates are some of my best friends that I'll have for the rest of my life. The coaches have helped me grow into both the player and person that I am. And I will forever be in debt to that university and that soccer program. I truly do love them. Awesome. Well said. And uh, yeah, we appreciate you coming on. Uh, Enjoy your week off and uh, good luck to you guys when you come back in a couple of weeks. Thank you so much for having me. This has been great. Yeah. Appreciate it. Have a good rest of your day. Of course, as well. And luckily, they have this week off to get caught back up on the injury front. I'm really excited for when the roster is fully healthy and uh, when everything gets back to Matt Potter's expectations that they had last season and just finding that identity and finally getting together. We saw Dabinia come in last week. We saw Mimi Larson come in and make her Heartland debut and several others. Izzy Rodriguez got in there and I mean, devastating loss, but bright things, good things to come. And on that note, we will head into the local sports update brought to you by Trackside Burgers. And uh, they are located at 1515 West 10th Street here in Joplin. And as I get things pulled up here, man, their food is great, though. I'm very excited whenever I hear about Trackside doing new things with barbecue. Go catch them this weekend and uh, get some of that barbecue. It it looks fantastic. And uh, we talk local baseball, and Joplin will take on Hickman at 11 a.m. tomorrow. And then Webb City will host Glendale tomorrow at 11 a.m. as well. Carthage and Neosho are in the Commerce Commerce Mickey Mantle Wood Bat Tournament. They both play today, so stay tuned to their team's social media pages for that one. And then we finish out with a two-minute warning brought to you by Hot Stone Pizzeria. And uh, if you're not feeling like cooking this weekend, go grab a uh, pizza from Hot Stone. And number four MSSU Baseball will open up an 11-game homestand. And uh, that started yesterday. They will take on number 18 Central Missouri today at 6 p.m. and tomorrow at 1 p.m. As for Pitt State, they hit the road yesterday. They will take on Rogers State today at 2 and tomorrow at 1 p.m. As for softball, Southern will host Pitt State tomorrow in a doubleheader game. And uh, that begins at 1 and game 2 to follow. All these games and uh, events are pending to the weather and the current and fluid COVID-19 situation. So tune in to each team's social media pages for times and updates. And well, the music is here and so is the end of another episode for Tony, Clint, and myself. Have a great and safe weekend. Guys, have a good Easter. Travel safe. Be safe. Enjoy family. And uh, yeah, just uh, make sure you all go get some tacos from Ghetto Taco Food Truck or the taco shop next Tuesday. Buy five, get one free. Buy ten, get three free. 
And if you get a chance, uh, you still have time to go nominate Ghetto Tacos for the Joplin Globe Best Places for 2023. Click on the food and dining section and scroll down to the favorite food truck vendor category to nominate them. It only takes a moment. And uh, yeah, we'll see y'all next week and uh, hopefully we'll have Tony and Clint back. But uh, take care and we'll see you later.